Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be looking at an interesting exponential equation. It's transcendental, it has pi in it, it's complex, so on and so forth. So, we have e to the power i pi x equals 1, and we're going to be solving for x values. I'm not going to be able to show you a graph because I don't think Desmos can graph this. It's a really weird um, picture but I'll show you the result from Wolfram Alpha. And we're gonna have a couple approaches uh, here, different approaches. The first approach is, I want to turn this into something that I know. So what do you know about e to the power i something? So hopefully you all remember or know the formula e to the power i alpha equals cosine alpha plus i sine alpha. So basically when you have a complex number, you can write it, you know, it's normally written in A plus BI form, the standard form, but you can always turn it into a polar form where you have an angle uh, that the, you know, the coordinate, the point makes with the positive x-axis, so on and so forth, right? So, and then we can turn it into something that uh, uses Euler's number, thanks to Euler, e to the power i alpha. So this is actually a more compact way to write a complex number in polar form. You can also call this polar form, same thing. So, can we make our expression look like this? Absolutely, we can do that. Uh, how do we do that? So, notice that what is being multiplied by alpha in the exponent? And that will be pi x. So, according to this definition, e to the power i pi x should be, since alpha is being replaced with pi x, right? Just a multiple of pi, sort of, right? we're going to be getting something like this from here. Cosine of pi x plus i times sine of pi x. Great. So where do we go from here? We have to set it equal to 1, as you know, because e to the power i pi x is equal to 1. So now let's forget about the exponential and focus on the polar form and the 1. So what can we get from here? Well, the first thing I'm thinking of, I can think about, about is the coefficient of i, which is this, must be 0 because there is no i on the right-hand side. So in other words, 1 can be written as 1 plus 0i where the imaginary part is just 0, right? So that's why uh, all real numbers are also complex numbers. Okay, so what is that supposed to mean? It means sine of pi x equals 0. And at the same time, since the real part must be 1, we can safely say that cosine of pi x must be 1. So we get a system from here. And this system is actually consistent because if you think about it, sine squared alpha plus cosine squared alpha is equal to 1, right? That's a well-known identity, identity, hopefully. And if you replace alpha with pi x, nothing is going to change. It's still true. And yes, it's verified. So that's good. But which system satisfies this? So you're thinking about an angle whose sine is 0 and whose cosine is 1 at the same time. And by the way, this is a, a unique situation because if only we were, we were only given sine pi x equals 0, then we would have more than one solution, right? It could be in different coordinates or um, coordinates. Anyways, so from here we can safely say that uh, the angle whose sine is 0 and whose cosine is 1 is 0 degrees or... 2 pi or any multiple of 2 pi. So what is that supposed to mean? Not just any multiple, but any multiple of 2 pi is correct, but let's say even multiples of pi. So it's kind of like 2k times pi. That's supposed to be equal to pi x. Make sense? And from here, what happens if you cancel out the pi because pi does not equal 0, and from here we get x equals 2k where k is an integer. You can also use the weird z symbol for integers. But this basically tells us if x is an even integer, then our equation will be true based on this identity. Okay? Makes sense? Okay, let's go ahead and look at uh, this from another angle. Maybe we could call this one uh, first approach or first method. And then we're going to talk about the second method. Let's talk about the second method. So, our second method, and let me rewrite the original problem, e to the power i pi x equals 1. Great. So now the second method depends on the following. 
we can write and basically it kind of uses the same idea but we don't use the cosine alpha plus i sine alpha form it's pretty much like very similar i know some people are going to be like hey it's the same thing but slightly different anyways so i'm going to write this as again e to the power i alpha is equal to cosine alpha plus i sine alpha right that that was the formula that i used but I want to do, the, do this a little differently. And what is e to the power i pi? I want to evaluate that first. What is e to the power i pi? e to the power i pi is cosine pi plus i sine pi. This is actually negative 1. Even though it, it kind of looks like a non-real number, it is a real number. Because cosine pi is negative 1, sine pi is 0. Therefore, we do get negative 1 from here. And you probably know this famous identity, which is super duper awesome, by the way, e to the power i pi plus 1 equals 0. A transcendental number, an irrational number, and, you know, times complex plus 1, which is an integer, so on and so forth, equals 0. A very interesting identity, to be honest with you. So anyways, so we could also get it directly from here, e to the power of alpha, so without using this, right? If you already know this identity. Anyways, so what does that tell us? So I can replace e to the power i pi with negative 1, but let me rewrite my equation. How can I use e to the power i pi here? This can be written as e to the power i pi to the power x equals 1, and then replace e to the power i pi with negative 1, and then you get something interesting, right? Negative 1 to the power x equals 1. When is this true? When x is an even integer, even powers of negative 1 equals positive 1. So x must be an even integer, two, like 2k, where k is an integer. So we pretty much got the same result. Now, let me tell you a couple more things here, uh, some explorations. Now, can't we ln both sides? Sure, why not? Like anytime you see e, you should think of ln, the natural logarithm. And especially if the variable is in the exponent, definitely log both sides. Base doesn't matter that much. So let's go ahead and do the following then. Let's ln both sides, get rid of the exponent. ln e to the power i pi x equals ln 1. You're going to bring this to the front. ln e is equal to 1. So this is going to become i pi x equals 0. Okay, great. And then we want to solve for x. So it would make sense if you divide both sides by i pi, and that would give you x equals 0 divided by i pi, and that is equal to 0. So the problem with this approach is we don't get all the even integers, but if you write this in a different form, you could possibly get it. How do you get all the solutions from here? Okay, please comment. And I'm going to show you the result from from alpha, and Dell will just finish up. So e to the power i pi x equals 1, the solution by Wolfram Alpha matches up with ours, x equals 2n, which is an even integer when n is an integer. Now, Wolfram Alpha also provided, which I didn't include here, integer solutions as 0 and I think plus minus 2, which is interesting because it didn't give us all the integer solutions, just gave us a couple examples. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.